okay when there is uncertainty with regard to which variable is causing the effect we say the variables are confounded it's easier to control a confounding or lurking variable in an experiment rather than an observational study so we're about to look at a multiple choice question you're going to see the setup of this experiment here and I think when we're reading through this you'll start to see what a poorly designed experiment this is. And then we will match it up with the correct multiple choice answer. And then I, I want us to also take a moment and create a better experiment. I just want us to actually practice creating our own experiment. What would we design our experiment to be if we were talking about this type of situation? How would we do it differently than what's written in example 18 to make it better? So let's read example 18 and start to talk about why it's not so, it's just, it's not good. And then let's make it better. So a study of human development showed two types of movies to groups of children. Crackers were available in a bowl and the investigators compared the number of crackers eaten by children watching the different kinds of movies. One kind of movie was shown at 8 a.m. right after the children had breakfast and another was shown at 11 a.m. right before the children had lunch. It was found that during the movie shown at 11 a.m. more crackers were eaten than during the movie shown at 8 a.m. The investigators concluded that the different types of movies had an effect on appetite. So the investigator said, well, I showed different movies at 8 and 11, and they ate more crackers at 11 a.m. than 8 a.m., so it must have been because of the movie. It had to be the, this movie made the kids hungrier. It wasn't this movie. But as you can see here, this is a very poorly designed experiment because not only are they showing two different movies, they're showing them at two different times. So what happens here is that, yeah, okay, at the end of this, they ate more at the 11 a.m. movie, but is that because of the type of movie that was shown at 11 a.m. or the time that the movie was shown? And the way they're wording this question, it, it's more likely that it's due to the time that the movie was shown. So just before we get to our, to our um, A through E answers here, I just want us to think, well, is this a study or an experiment? This is an experiment. And you might be asking, well, why? Weren't they just watching the kids eat crackers? Sure, but they were regulating which movie the kids saw. Right? The, the kids didn't get to choose which movie they saw. They, they were told which movie was going to be seen. So if we go through a couple of our vocab terms here, let's just see if we can pick these apart. So we had an experiment. The explanatory versus response variable. For me, I find it easier to figure out what the response variable is first and then work myself backwards. So response is whatever they're measuring or counting at the end. And this problem said they were gonna count the number of crackers that were eaten. So that's what they were taking care of at the end. So I'm gonna try and count the number of crackers eaten in each movie room, see if one is larger than the other. What did they ex think explained how many crackers were eaten? They thought that movie type explained the number of crackers eaten. So I had that going on. Explanatory variable, type of movie. Response variable, number of crackers eaten. For treatments, I had two, whatever the two different types of movies are, or were, um, we'll create our own when we go through and redesign this experiment. The experimental units, those were the kids themselves. Because this was an experiment, I could say there was a cause and effect relationship. Keeping in mind, this is one of the most poorly designed experiments, so ultimately your cause and effect relationship means nothing, but technically you can, you can run a cause and effect relationship. Um, there's not really a control group here because there were two different types of movies. We don't have a placebo. There wasn't a placebo movie, so there wasn't a placebo effect. We were just comparing two different types of treatments, and all this is fine. In terms of single versus double blind, uh, it, it at best could be a single blind experiment. And what I mean by that is the kids know what type of movie they're going to be watching. So there's no way to blind the kids. We could blind the folks that are counting the crackers. So if we had two lab techs that went into those two different movie rooms and counted the number of crackers eaten, 
if they didn't know which type of movie had been shown, which I would hope that was the case, it would at least be single blind. All right, so if they don't know what type of movie is being shown, their bias towards one movie or the, the next, or one movie or the other, won't present itself because they, they're just gonna count the number of crackers. They're not gonna try and lower that number or raise that number because they don't know which movie was shown in that particular room. Okay, so taking a look at the rest of this, all right, so let's go through A through E, start to talk about what are some potential answers and see if we can narrow it down. So the results cannot be trusted because, so we wanna figure out what is the main problem with how this experiment is designed. So they can't be trusted because boys and girls have different eating patterns. They can't be trusted because the investigators were biased. They knew beforehand what they hoped the study would show. The results cannot be trusted because the investigators should have used several bowls with cracker, crackers randomly placed in a bowl. The, the results cannot be trusted because the time the movie was shown and the type of movie are confounded or the results cannot be trusted because children do not like movies. So just starting to go through this, I think the most ridiculous answer in here is E. I'm just gonna cross that one out. That Children do like movies. Uh, there's, there's a gajillion movies that children love to watch. All right, so let's start to talk about these. It's true that, or I think it's true that boys and girls have different eating patterns. In all honesty, I don't know. I don't have kids of my own, but I, I would imagine they might be a little bit different. But that's not the reason that the results can't be trusted because that would be true regardless of which type of movie or regardless of which time the movies were shown. Okay. The results can't be trusted because the investigators were biased. They knew beforehand what they hoped the study would show. This is a pretty good answer. Um, I don't know for sure that the investigators were biased. I tend to think everybody's biased not because we're not awesome, just because we're human. Like I have bias, I think everyone has bias. Um, maybe they knew beforehand what they hoped the study would show, so I'll put that as a possible. That seems like one that I don't wanna rule out right now. The investigators should have used several bowls with crackers randomly placed in each. That sounds like a good enough idea, right? I wouldn't wanna put one bowl of crackers up front because maybe the kids that are farthest away won't come as often, but if you only have the one bowl up front in the first type of movie and you have that same setup in the second type of movie, then you're controlling that in both rooms. So while I do think it was probably a good idea to have several bowls, as long as they have the same number of bowls in each, that's not the reason these results can't be trusted. Because again, when you're trying to design an experiment, what you want in each of these rooms, you want room with movie type one to be exactly like the room with movie type two, with one exception, that the movies are different. So if I have one bowl in the center here, as long as I have one bowl in the center here, I'm good to go. If I have four bowls here, one in each corner, and I have four bowls here, one in each corner, I'm good to go. We want things to be as similar as possible. We wanna control as much as we can in those two rooms so that ultimately at the end, if there is a difference in the number of crackers eaten, it has to be due to movie type because that was the only difference between the two rooms. It can't be any other confounding variable. All right, the time the movie was shown and the type of movie are confounded. All right, winner, winner, chicken dinner. That is definitely the strongest reason that the, uh, that the results can't be trusted. Again, I don't know if this is true or not. I, I might be suspicious of it, but I know for sure this is true. The time the movie was shown and the type of movie are confounded. Again, it's a terribly designed experiment. So let's go and create a better experiment. All right, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna draw a little flow chart. I'm gonna take my kids, I'm gonna break them up into two groups. So I'm gonna randomly split my kids into two groups. Split children up into two groups. And I'm picking two groups only because they said there were two movie types. If I had more than two movie types, I'd pick more than two groups. So let's say I send half the kids here, half the kids here. I'm gonna show them movie of type one. Uh, let's see, what is a popular kid movie that's out? Oh, that Wreck-It Ralph just came out. Wreck-It Ralph. 
I'll put that in there. And then um, maybe over in this room, I have movie of type two. Uh, let's see, what's another popular movie this week? Uh, Aquaman. I don't know if that's really kid friendly, but we've got Wreck-It Ralph in one and Aquaman in the other. Um, does the type of movie affect whether or not these kids are gonna eat crackers? At the end of both of these movies, I'm gonna compare the number of crackers eaten but things that I want to really be specific, uh, if I want to control, I want the to show the movie at the same time. Show movies at same time. So if this one's getting shown at 8, this one's getting shown at 8. If this one's getting shown at 11, this one's getting shown at 11, as long as they're the same. Um, we can control for other things, too. Uh, what, what might affect appetite? Um, I would think I wanted to make sure I had the same number of crackers in each room. Um, I know when, I, uh, when the temperature changes, I tend to eat differently. Like when it's hotter, I actually eat less than when it's colder. So for me, I would think I would want the same temperature in each room. Let me start writing some of these down. So I would say same number of crackers. I'd make sure that was happening. Um, rooms at the same temperature. And we could think of a bunch of different potential confounding variables that we want to control for. But again, the idea in any experiment is if you have these two rooms and you're really trying to use this explanatory variable of movie type, you want this room to be exactly like this room the only exception being the type of movie being shown. Little kids movie versus action movie. Does the type of movie affect the number of crackers eaten? And that would extend to I want the same number of seats. I want them in the same configuration. I probably want the kids um, to have the same directions for breakfast, things like that. So control as much as you can in the experiment so that when you get to the end, and you count the number of crackers eaten in each room, you can compare those numbers I'll compare those numbers. If there's a difference, then I can attribute it to the movie type, not any other kind of confounding variable. So that would be a much better designed experiment. And when we get through chapter 10, then we'll figure out how you actually can compare these two numbers that you're gonna get, the number of crackers eaten in room one and room two, and you can say, yes, there was a difference. It's gotta be attributed to movie type, or no, there wasn't really a difference. It doesn't matter which type of movie you show, the kids are gonna eat the same, same amount of crackers.